Hey everybody, it's Pastor Tom and Tammy, and we are on episode two of our series, What Went Wrong, and it's exciting. This is an exciting discussion mm -hmm. that we're having, and tonight we're going to delve into... In the beginning. In the beginning. Before it went before wrong. Before it went wrong. And it after went, it went right. wrong. So let's pray, Tammy, okay. and then get started. Father, we thank you for this time tonight, and we just pray for just your truth to be revealed, and we pray for just uh, the explosion of your word mm. uh, in, in the hearts and minds yes, of the people Lord. who are listening. Yes, Lord. And just that revelation in Jesus' yes, name. In Jesus amen. Name. Amen. And I pray for an explosion of the revelation yes. of God's word in our hearts and in the hearts of the hearers of this uh, series. So let's let's go to some scripture. Do you want to do you want to say anything or start with anything? Yeah, we're going to start with in the beginning because we have to start with God, um, mm -hmm. and that's where we're going to start. So well, and in all all of this that we're experiencing today really started with Adam and Eve and their uh, disobedience, mm -hmm. right? So, um, where, do we gonna, where are we going to read? I think we should start with 1-1. One, one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's where we start. Mm -hmm. The very beginning, God. Um, and God existed before he made anything else, and God was never created. Mm -hmm. And that's really important for people to know and understand that uh, nobody created God. God's been here. God has existed from the very beginning, mm -hmm. and he created everything, mm -hmm. us and everything. Right. Um, I think that's where we start. And people trip over that. Mm -hmm. I mean, they do. Right. There's a lot, I mean, people that are not believers mm -hmm. trip over the whole God thing, you know. Yeah. It's like, but for us, this is not a, even a stretch. We, right. we fully embrace that God has been there from the very beginning and even before. Right. He even decided to create this whole world and humankind. Mm -hmm. um, he wow. has no beginning and he has no end. Right. But the world had a beginning and mm -hmm. the world has mm -hmm. an end. Mm -hmm. um, God's, because of sin, because it of has sin. an end. Right. right. And God is the foundation of everything that he created. Mm -hmm. um, do we want to go to Acts or you, do you want to go right into well, Adam I, and Eve? I, well, is there something you want to say about Acts? Yeah, I... will just say it then. Um, Acts 17, <coughs> verse 19. Okay, it's, wait a it's, minute. Let me um, get over there. Yeah. Acts 17, Acts 17 verse, 19. verse 19. And that is... We're going back to in the beginning because right. we're going to Paul's message to the Greeks. Right. Listen, get your Bibles and, out and, and follow along with us because this is important. This is Bible study. Yeah. You should be following along. I'm going to read quite a few scriptures here. We're going to start at 19, verse 19. Mm -hmm. So Paul is talking, and he's talking to Athens, people in Athens. And let's see, 19. And they took him, Paul, and brought him to the Arab Areopagus. Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new teaching is which you are proclaiming. For you are bringing some strange things to our ears, so we want to know what these things mean. Now all the Athenians and the strangers visiting there used to spend their time in nothing other than telling or hearing something new. So they were very interested in new doctrines, philosophies. teachings, philosophies, gods, all this stuff. They yeah. were what we would call... Open-minded people. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard somebody say that? Oh, you need to be more open-minded. Well, I need to be Jesus-minded. Right. I need to be word-minded. I don't need to be right. open-minded. I need to be word-minded. Okay? So Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I observe that you are very religious in all, in all respects. For while I was passing through and examining the objects of your worship, which they had 
statues that they worshipped anything idols. and everything. They were idols. Yeah. Um, they worshipped the sun. They worshipped the moon. They worshipped uh, everything. Kind of sounds like our society yeah. today. <clears throat> I found an altar with this inscription, to an unknown God. Therefore, what you worship in ignorance, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and all things in it. So this is back to in the beginning. Mm -hmm. God made the world. God made everything in it. He is the Lord of heaven and earth. So he's God of heaven, everything above. He's the God of this earth. He does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything. So God uh, is not... Um, he doesn't dwell in something we can make or build or, mm -hmm. and God's going to be in this thing. He, mm -hmm. He's outside of that. Uh, he actually lives in us now. But he himself gives to all people life and breath and all things, <coughs> life and breath and all things are everything. So God made the world. God made everything in it. God gives us life. God gives us breath and everything else. Mm -hmm. We're nothing, okay, so listen, nothing without God. This, we are building tonight, today, we are building a foundation, listen carefully, to what we are going to talk about next week mm -hmm. and the week after and the week after. You need to listen. Re say that again, yeah. Tammy. That's very important what yeah. you just said. You need to listen to this. L say it again. God has made the world and everything in it, and he gives us life and breath and everything else. Wow. Or, and all that things. That is so powerful. Life, breath, all things, that everything else. That is so powerful. And this is what he's preaching to them. I, li listen, let's say it one more time. I want us to get this. God, this is foundational. God has made the world and everything in it. What verse is this? Uh, it's, let's see. I don't have my pencil on um, what 24. So he's proclaiming the God who made the world and all things in it. Since he is the Lord of heaven and earth, he doesn't dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything. Since he himself gives to all people, we're in verse 25 now, life and breath and all things, or some mm -hmm. versions say everything else. Mm -hmm. Life, breath, everything mm -hmm. else. All things else, everything. Um, we don't have life or even breath without God. Mm -hmm. We're Did you hear that? Nothing. Say it again. We don't have life, life or, breath or breath or anything, anything else without, without God. God. And we're talking about yeah. the ancient of days. We're yes. talking about Jehovah, uh, uh, Rafa, Tzidkenu, mm -hmm. um, uh, my mind just went blank with all the names of God, Shalom, um, all of those, and His Son, Jesus Christ. That's who we're talking about, yeah. okay? Yeah. All right, keep going, 26. Yes, um, and He, God, made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth. So, so let, okay, go ahead. I want to say something when you say that. You go, what are you going to say? One man. We're all related, by the way. Yes, we are. God made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth. So, you, you know, that right there is mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. Because when, when uh, you talk to racists, you know, black, white, uh, oriental, Indian, and you realize the scripture, he's made from one blood, mm -hmm. every nation of men, to live on the entire face of the earth. We're one race. The, we are this the here, human race. This here, the color of this, uh, this organ, actually, I, I think I've read that skin is like an organ on, that covers your, your bones and your, uh, your muscles and your, all that, you know. The color of it means nothing to means God. means nothing. It's just, it means nothing to God. It, it, you know, Satan has made it mean something to mm -hmm. people, but believers in Jesus Christ, we don't, we don't get wrapped up no. in that stuff because we are all one. He has made from one blood every nation of men. Bam. 
All right. Keep one going. race. One race. The human race. The human race. Yeah. Um, having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation. Let me just say this, Tammy. You're going to learn something if you watch this series. And it might make you feel uncomfortable. It might make you mad. It might make you have to change your thinking and, and line yourself up with what God says. I'm being mm -hmm. very passionate about this because I told you last week that we've been thinking about this for over a month, that we need to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Keep going. So having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation, even our times and our boundaries, uh, our whole life, mm -hmm. God, God has already determined that. Yes. Um, why? That they would seek God if perhaps they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. So the purpose of God creating mankind is for us to seek him and to find him. Mm -hmm. God wants that. God created us for a relationship, for mm -hmm. fellowship. That's why we're, that's why God created us. That's mm -hmm. what we were created for. Mm -hmm. Um, because he wants that relationship and we are his offspring, which we'll get to that here in a minute. So mm -hmm. we'll get to that. Um, for in him and God, we live and we move and we exist. So our very life, our ability to move, our very existence is only because of God. And, you know, I've thought about this before. Um, God holds the entire universe in perfect, perfect timing and harmony um, with one tiny, tiny, tiny change. A meteorite could take out the earth in a split second. Mm -hmm. Something could come from space that's uh, not seen at a lightning speed and annihilate everything. If the earth tilted the wrong way, if the sun got a little bit closer, if the moon change the the oceans could go out of their boundaries and everything so god it's god has everything balanced in his in his hands the whole world in his hands um perfectly protecting our very existence mm -hmm. absolutely um everyone's existence people who don't believe in him they they don't exist without god uh, even as some of your own poets have said, so now he's talking to them about their poets, their um, educational philosophers, for we also are his children. Being then the children of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and thought of man. So we are God's children, we are his offspring, even their own poets said that they were children of God. Um, but we ought not to think that the divine nature, that God's nature is like gold or silver, like an idol or a statue mm -hmm. or something made out of stone or something that you can create. There's nothing, we can't create anything and say, this is God. Mm -hmm. Well, we once, are the created. Right. We, he is the creator. Once again, that is man trying to find and fashion and create their own salvation. Right. right. We can't do that. Therefore, having overlooked the times of ignorance, God is now declaring to men that all people everywhere should repent mm -hmm. because he has fixed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness through a man, capital M, Jesus, whom he has appointed, having furnished proof to all men. How did he furnish the proof? By raising him, Jesus, from the dead. Mm -hmm. And that is a pretty amazing thing, mm -hmm. right? And Jesus was seen by witnesses, up to 500 people, for days and days after he was resurrected. So this was a documented fact. What I think is interesting is this scripture 31, for he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man who is appointed. <coughs> um, let me back up. It was actually the previous verse 30. He commands all men everywhere to repent. That is our message. That is what we have to tell people, that it's time to repent. What is repentance? Turn around. Mm -hmm. Look at God. Look at God. Look at, the, look at Jesus Christ. Look, there's a big cross right there. We're looking at it right now. Look at Jesus. Look at what Jesus did for you. 
right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you were going to go back and read about Adam and Eve's creation, but God created Adam from the dust of the earth and breathed life mm -hmm. into him. So our very breath, um, the breath of life that was first breathed into Adam and then passed down from person to person is from God. And we have a moral obligation to show God respect mm -hmm. um, because we don't exist without him. The entire earth, planet, and every person on it would not exist without God. And the, uh, you know, when you go back to Genesis and you go back to the beginning and Adam and Eve, they had a perfect communion with God. They had that perfect, close mm -hmm. uh, fellowship, relationship with God. Um, it was the perfect world, the perfect communion with God until Satan, you know, tricked deceived them, them. Deceived he them. He tricked them. And, and they were in a place they weren't supposed to be, mm -hmm. which made them open to the deception. Right. We're going to read about that. Right. So, <clears throat> so let, let's just say in verse uh, Genesis 2, 7, Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. We just read that in the book of Acts, mm -hmm. didn't we? We just read it. God planted a garden, verse 8, in the east in Eden, and there he placed the man whom he had formed out of the, out of the ground. The Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, along with the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay, so then let's go over to verse um, 15. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till and to keep it. You know, some people think, oh, I should just be sitting around. No, God put Adam in the garden to take care of it. That's why people, I was just thinking about this today. It's, um, uh, we're actually filming this in May. So we're getting ready this weekend to try to get all of our garden planted and our, our patio pots and all that stuff so we can have this fun summer outside. We like to be outside a lot in the summertime. And that's God put that in us, mm -hmm. right? He put man in the garden and he put that desire in us to take care of gardens and trees mm -hmm. and flowers and grasses and all that stuff. So he, put, he took the man, put him in the Garden of Eden to till and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat for in the day that you eat from it, you will surely die. Okay, who did he tell that to? Adam and Eve. Uh, no, that, that, that. Adam. 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 He said that to Adam. Mm -hmm. Right? Listen up, man. <clears throat> Verse 18. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. And out of the ground the Lord God uh, formed every beast of the uh, field and bird of the sky. And let me just see here. I want, I want to skip through some of that. Uh, so, um, verse 20, the man gave names to all the livestock, to the birds of the sky, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper suitable for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. Then Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She'll be called woman, for she was taken out of man. Therefore a man will leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife and they'll become one flesh. They were both naked and the man and his wife were not ashamed. All right, there's a lot in there, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to, I want us, I want us to see that, okay? Well, this, we're, the title of this is Where It Went Wrong, right? And that, what we just saw here was God's perfect plan and God's perfect world. Right, did you hear there that? Was. I mean, we're not talking about marriage yet, but we're going to be coming back we'll to that. We're coming back and, you to know, this. in the future, in the, yeah. in the next few weeks. But this is God's plan. This is God's plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you know, don't you know? You got to look at the word. Look at the word. We're we're about the word of God here at Cornerstone Alive. You got to. We're standing on the word of God. What they what the world does out there. We're not part of that. We're part of God's word. That's what we stand on. And we're not going to be wishy-washy. Oh, well, you know, Pastor Tom. No, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the word, the word of God. Not what the world says. 
I have uh, some notes here to read on 2-7, the breath of life. So although God created light with the mere word, 1-3, uh, God said, let there be light, and there was light. Mm -hmm. um, which, by the way, we'll talk about that for just a little tiny second. Mm -hmm. The Big Bang Theory, and I think we've mentioned this Kabang. before in the past. Um, scientists agree that at some point in time, the universe is created instantly by some mm -hmm. big explosion and you know that this happened and you know a lot of times christians think well that doesn't uh, that doesn't follow the word of god that doesn't match up with this but it actually does our science actually proves god's very existence and if you get into studying that it's very fascinating but um god said it and it happened and it happened instantly when god spoke it god said let there be light light was and it was mm -hmm. good and so um, that big bang or explosion that happened that created that was done by the creator. Um, in order for that to happen, there had to be somebody to create it to happen. Mm -hmm. That stuff doesn't just happen uh, on its own. So um, God did that with light, but it said, we read in verse 7, He created man by fashioning a body out of mud and clay, which is very interesting. He didn't, he actually took the time to actually make man, you know, not just speaking it out, but he actually took and created. Um, and then he breathed life into it. The breath of life is something that only God can bestow. Medical knowledge enables doctors to keep a human body alive by keeping the heart pumping and the vital organs functioning, but it, it does not enable them to keep or to call back the breath of life. Mm -hmm. um, some people have speculated that the breath of life is the human soul, but that's not accurate because later on, animals are also described as in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life, which seems to indicate that this is a reference to the miracle of living, breathing flesh. So even the fact that animals breathe is because of God. Mm -hmm. Without God, there's no breath in mm -hmm. your dog or your cat. God mm -hmm. put that breath, that life, because God is life. There's nothing, mm -hmm. there's no life without God. So um, for something to be alive and breathing, it's because of God. Mm -hmm. So, All right, so we are talking about um, <clears throat> where this went off the rails. And this conversation is going to have import to every other conversation that we have mm -hmm. after today in this series. Verse, chapter three, verse one. The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, God, has God said, has God said? What is that? FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. He's, he's putting uncertainty. Well, what now, what, what did God say? Has God said you shall not eat of any tree of the garden? Do you see the confusion in that statement? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit from the trees of the garden, but from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, You will not eat of it, nor will you touch it, or else you will die. Now, I don't see where God said don't touch it, but um. you can't, if you're eating it, there may have been another Yeah, reference. I don't I don't know, but anyway. Um, then the serpent said to the woman, and this is an outright lie, you surely will not die. What a lie! Do you realize that people are still being fed lies like this today? Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead and have another um, Go ahead and, and use drugs one more time. Oh, you can do this dangerous thing. Nothing's going to happen to you. You'll be okay. You will not surely die. For God knows, God knows, oh, God knows, that on the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. They were already like God. Mm-hmm. They were already like God. How do we know that? Let's go back to Genesis 1. Um, uh, what is it? 27. 
God, yeah, 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Adam and Eve were created in the image of God. They were already like God. Mm -hmm. Just like our kids are like us. They bear the stamp of our DNA. Adam and Eve had the DNA of God. They were already like God. He gave them life. Mm -hmm. It's the, the devil just keeps dumping on lies and dumping on lies and dumping on lies. Um, let's see here, verse six. So here, here's the contemplation. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, wow, this, this fruit on this tree is look, looks really good, that it was pleasing to the eyes, there, there's part of the trouble of stuff, uh, people, sin, and a tree desirable to make one wise, because the devil just told her, oh, you'll be, you'll be just like God. You'll be wise. She took of its fruit and ate, and then she gave to her husband with her, and he ate. And then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. That, it's interesting that the very first thing that happened was they realized they were no longer clothed with the glory of God. Mm -hmm. So they, they, what, what happened is they were reduced to the lowest level, so to speak, of their existence, which was their flesh. For their flesh. Then, the both of, uh, then the eyes of both were open. They knew that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. So, I mean, really, I just wanted to read that so that we could see this is where it went wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, and Adam was right there. He was right there with her, right beside her. And he was the first one to hear from God before she was ever created. He received the commandment before she was created. If we go back to chapter 2, we just read it. And he should have said, Eve, we have got to get away from here. We've got to get away from here. Tammy, we, we've spoken a lot of Bible truths tonight. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else we need to yeah, share? Yeah, I would just like to add, I mean, some people might question, why did God put the tree there? Why was the serpent allowed to be there? Um, why didn't God prevent that from happening? It's because God gave Adam and Eve and gives all of us a choice to serve him or not. Mm -hmm. Because God doesn't want relationship that is puppets or mm -hmm. you know uh, that God's manipulating and controlling you and he's your puppet master or whatever he wants people to be in relationship with him because they trust him they believe him they want that fellowship with him and um, Adam and Eve had a choice to make mm -hmm. I mean God wasn't going to force them to live mm -hmm. in in uh, the Garden of Eden in perfection in close communion with him he was going to let them have a choice and you know what a big risk for God to have to take but he already had a plan the plan was Jesus right. but you know Adam and Eve were acting like rebellious children you know God mm -hmm. their father who was good to them and provided everything they needed protected them did not lie to them um, they became rebellious and that's where it went wrong because mm -hmm. they decided they knew better than God mm -hmm. they were they were gonna yeah, we've got, we're, well, we know better than him. We're going to do this. It was the beginning of what we see today. Mm -hmm. People are listening to everything, every other voice out there, but God. Right. They're not listening to the word. And ultimately, we have to come back to this word. This is the truth. Can this is the truth. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians 5.10. And while you're turning there, I just want to read some notes that I wrote down. So your life is part of God's plan. Everything belongs to God. Life belongs to God. He made it. It is his. You don't own yourself. God owns you. He's a father to those who receive and him. He owns us, but it's not forced. Can I, can I say this? God was right in two aspects, and Satan is a liar. Mm -hmm. He said, you will die. Mm -hmm. Die spiritually, but your body will die. You will die physically. Our bodies were not meant to die no. ever. No. They were designed to live Im as immortals, but be in, in flesh. But sin is rotten. It's evil. It's mm -hmm. horrible. 
And because of sin, uh, the, the um, overarching effects of sin, God said, you know what? These bodies are not going to live forever. I won't mm -hmm. let them live forever. Imagine, this is why Adam and Eve were barred from the Garden of Eden because there was this conversation. We've, we gotta get them out of here because what if they go eat the tree of life? They'll be in this fallen state forever. Mm -hmm. How horrible would that be? Think of all the evil people, Hitler and Stalin and all these evil, uh, Mao Zedong, all these evil people who murdered millions of people and they're still alive, they'd be still alive today? That would be horrible, that'd be mm -hmm. absolutely horrible. But their bodies, all bodies, experience the effect of what God said, mm -hmm. your flesh is going to die, it will not live forever, I won't let it. Mm -hmm. For, for, your, which, for our own good, right. I think. Which, which, that's what I was saying. Our body, it, we live in it. Our spirit, our soul lives in it, but we don't own it. Our body mm -hmm. is, God created us. So when you create, you make something, you, that's yours. You created mm -hmm. it, you made it. So we were made with a God-given purpose. And even with earthly laws, you can't just do anything you want to mm -mm. do with your body. You nope. can't just say, you can't just go out there and have your body do whatever your body wants to do because no. the law of the city will say, no, you can't do that. The law of the no, city, the law of the state, the law right. of the land right. will so, step in front of you and it will punish you. Right. So it, so I read 2 Corinthians 5.10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive his recompense in the body according to what he has done, whether it was good or bad. So what you do with your body that God created mm -hmm. and that is God's creation, belonging to God, you are going to to stand before him and give account of what you did in mm -hmm. your body, whether it's good or bad. And I just have a couple more notes I wrote down. People don't like to think that there's someone in charge. Nobody likes to have somebody else in charge of them, mm -hmm. but God is in charge. Um, the alternative to God not being in charge is nobody being in charge. Mm -hmm. And rebellious mankind has created the mess that we now live in. Started with Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. has continued on and on. Mm -hmm. So mankind, we can't reverse this mess. We can't save this mess. Mm -hmm. We can't rebuild it. We can't remake the world ourselves. We, no. we cannot save the world. And, and that's what the world's trying to do. Mm -hmm. So look at inflation and recessions and prices going up and prices going down and people getting unemployed and people getting employed and this and that and wars and famines. All of that hurricanes is a, and earthquakes is a and result of sin. Mm -hmm. And as long as there are people in the earth who reject God, the one true God, and His Son, Jesus Christ, these things are going to persist. But God is going to stop it. Yeah. And we're going to, that's part of our discussion uh, in the next few weeks. We're going to so, talk about that. Just end this. Only the Creator can reverse, save, rebuild, remake mankind and the universe. Mm -hmm. Only God can do that, the Creator. When we submit to God's rule and God's order and God's purpose for things to be different and follow Him, that's when that change can happen. But continuing to live in a rebellious state, which is what our world is in, living outside of Jesus Christ, the only end result of that is death and destruction. Mm -hmm. There's no life outside of Christ. So when you mm -hmm. live in that rebellion, just like Adam and Eve, they walked in that rebellion. The end result is death. And the end result of not walking and living in Christ now is death. Mm -hmm. But we know Jesus Christ. But we know Jesus. If you yeah. know Jesus Christ, you have life. Yes. And you have no worries. And you have hope. Jesus is the rescue plan. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Well, let's pray, Tammy. Okay. Father, we just thank you uh, for this new series that you gave us to, to go over. And Lord, we're excited what we're going to learn. 
and the, the word that we're going to put before our faces. We give you praise and glory, and Lord, we just pray for every person out there struggling with unemployment or um, low wages or all the price increases and all those things or fear of what's going to happen, Lord. We just pray that they would get a hold of your word and they would seek your face. Lord, we just bless you and praise you and love you and give you all the praise and glory. We just thank you, Jesus, for your love and for your hope that you've put in us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Listen, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you can know about upcoming videos. Um, like the video. Press the like button and comment. Let us know what you think or if you've got questions or just comments. We'd love to hear from you. God bless you. If you haven't been to Cornerstone Alive and you don't have a church to go to, come out sometime and visit us. I think you'll like what you, um, what you see here because Jesus is in this place. God bless you and have a great week.